A good early Friday afternoon to you. This weather video is driven by 802cars.com, representing 802 Toyota, Twin City Subaru, and 802 Honda, all located off of X7 on Interstate 89. This Velco Weather Hazards Outlook is valid the rest of today, Friday, through next Thursday, September the 8th. Super project weather over Labor Day weekend, and very possibly this will last into the uh, late part of next week, thanks to a very strong area of higher pressure, putting the block on all weather systems, ones to the north and west as well, as Hermine to the south. Now, Hermine will loop and re-intensify uh, a little to our south, but uh, a little more than high cloudiness is expected. Possibly a few rain showers will move in across southern New England. It could make it up to the Massachusetts border and far southern Vermont the middle of next week, but fairly low confidence on that. Heat indices in the meantime will increase into mid to late next week with the uh, next chance for showers and thunderstorms associated with a cold front that will be pushing toward the region late Thursday into Friday of next week, just beyond this period. Well, all eyes are on uh, Hermine, and that's going to be the main story here. And Hermine is, uh, was a Category 1 hurricane. It's now basically moved into uh, just about the Georgia-South Carolina border area inland. This is uh, Hermine focused in here, and you can see uh, some pretty good winds here up around 45 knots sustained, and uh, or at least gusts. And uh, precipitation pattern pulling in some drier air now on its uh, southwestern flank, and that's typical as these move inland. It's going to be taking a track, of course, up into uh, North Carolina. Of course, the most interesting thing is uh, what does it do when it gets up off the coast of North Carolina and goes out to sea over some relatively warm water? And I'll show you that in a second. But uh, the deal is uh, with the um, latest modeling, it continues to sort of loop it around a couple times and then sends it out to sea south toward Nova Scotia harmlessly by late next week. And these high clouds here will be what will be overspreading up the uh, sort of uh, Appalachians and uh, interior sections of the East Coast and then eventually into northern New England, we're being blocked by a big area of higher pressure, and that's going to keep the block on Hermine. And these yellow blotches here are sea surface temperatures that are well above normal, and they extend all the way up into, into the Gulf of Maine. So our water temperatures being above normal is going to play a role in keeping Hermine I think a warm core or some sort of hybrid, not quite extra tropical system. Now this is the 11 a.m. official track from the uh, National Hurricane Center, and um, Tropical Storm Hermine gets out here, and then it's uh, probably going to power up to a hurricane and then back to a tropical storm, doing some loops. And this is where it gets interesting. But notice. This is 8 a.m. Wednesday, so we're not seeing a whole lot of movement basically from Sunday in the morning through Wednesday morning. So here's the uh, model tracks. Again, this is the European and uh, 994 here, just getting ready to go across the Pamlico Sound in North Carolina. So we'll see what happens here now. The precipitation shield has moved off to the north. There's a lot of entraining drier air. So it's uh, mostly the northern half of the system, which typically spins up and becomes the western half of the system. So if you keep an eye on that heaviest rainfall, watch when it goes uh, a little bit out to sea, encounters some slightly warmer water, and then it powers up. And this is where we think it could become a hurricane again. And then most of the precip is wrapping around its western periphery. That could be problematic for areas of uh, really New Jersey, back down to the Delmarva Peninsula. So uh, an interesting uh, situation here, no doubt about it. Now we get into a little bit later on here, and you can see Hermine gets about as close as it's going to get right there, and that's valid about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning on Wednesday. And then Hermine kind of falls apart, weakens, becomes much more compact, and is no real issue. Our next uh, set of showers and thunderstorms are not associated with Hermine, but with a cold front pushing in. And uh, at least uh, by around two o'clock on the in the afternoon on Friday. Another quick look at Hermine and her track and the loops that'll take place out to sea, well south of Long Island, with just fringe effects. And taking a look at the uh, current conditions with the cloud cover.
Okay, projected precipitation, notice that it stays well south of the coastline. Uh, you're inside about, it uh, looks like 2,500ths, uh, maybe half an inch in some areas that need that rainfall here. But uh, this is just a hundredth of an inch, this little skinny, narrow area of drier conditions. And that's almost extending into Vermont. I mentioned heat indices, and those are definitely going to be coming up as we head into the middle to the uh, end of next week before that frontal system comes in from the north and west. So we're stuck under this uh, stagnant area of higher pressure. A lot of buildup, unfortunately, of uh, bad air quality will probably be pushing in with very hazy conditions as well, and a lot of heat and humidity. So our temperatures are coming up. And these are our forecast temperatures uh, based off of Montpelier. And you can see uh, they just continue to rise until we get into about Friday when a cold front comes through and delivers some slightly cooler air, probably some showers and thunderstorms late in the day on Thursday and into Friday. That's our next real concern for utilities, as we'll primarily be spectators watching the remains or remnants of Hermine. That's it from here. Roger Hill, Weathering Heights.